Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Land Rover Range Rover Villar facelift. This is the L516 D200 guys, diesel with 200 horsepower. The dynamic HSC variant, only one variant is on offer. And although this is the facelift, for me personally, this is a face drop because they've actually removed features from this car and made it extremely inconvenient to use the infotainment system. And that's the reason I can probably not even recommend this car, but straight away, let's open the engine bay. Just 200 horsepower for this much pricing is kind of ridiculous. There it says, Ingenium plastic engine cover lot of space here because obviously bigger engines also go in this particular car and there is insulation right there let's shut this there is no change at the front at least the front bumper is the same as before because this is the dynamic hsc and the earlier was the r dynamic variant which was offered the bumper is the same with these copper elements which are definitely out of place here you obviously get fog lights right there everything is obviously led but the light has been revised the way the drl is done is also very different and these are pixel led headlights which obviously get adaptive high beam and whatnot obviously they are auto leveling and follow me home function corner bending lights and whatnot is there the lights do look absolutely phenomenal at night but they've gone ahead and removed headlight washers headlight washers were here earlier but land rover has removed that as well thinking that customers would not know about it but come on land rover you think we are fools that we would not realize when you remove features from the car says range rover here which is sort of finished in a grayish color land rover badging with this green surround just like my watch right now by the way this thing has been revised the design of the grill on the inside that has been revised there's a camera here six parking sensors at the front you know why because it has got side parking sensors there is no cell for auto park here dynamic swipe indicators they look absolutely stunning and the variant name is actually written here velar d200 dynamic hse and the chassis number it says range over here again this copper treatment is just out of place aero twin wipers obviously and you've got two cameras here for lane keep assist and lane departure warning this is an absolute stunning looking car and that is the major reason why you would want to buy one other than that yeah, this car doesn't really have much to offer from the side you realize it is very much similar other than the fact that the alloy wheels have been revised right now so this car is around 4.8 meters in length the wheelbase is around 2.9 meters which is identical to the f base but this is longer by 72 mm wheel size is similar yeah 20 inch wheels 255 50 20 is the size of the tires alloy wheel design could be a lot better because it kind of doesn't look to me like a 20 inch wheel at all some design treatment here you obviously get a camera you also get a light and it also projects the range rover silhouette here at night the villa is obviously this one obviously gets a dual tone treatment so you've got black finishing on the roof the door handles pop in and out obviously this has been one of the usps of the villa but now a lot of cars are actually doing this request sensor almost everywhere there's a shark fin antenna only one no clear side camera here and this is where fuel goes in add blue has to be filled diesel yellow cap that's kind of nice and it slots in right here coming to the rear of the car let me shut this divide not shut again rear tire size is the same six parking sensors rear design might not be very different but it is a bit different because the lights have been revised earlier lights used to go like this this one is a little different obviously range over finished in grayish color what else has changed at the rear well the bumper has also changed which is kind of different firstly this is a towing hook earlier this reflector was here now it has been moved right there that's about it this camera actually has a spray to clean the camera as well which is kind of cool and it says velar here earlier it used to say the variant name p250 or d200 right there but no that's not there anymore rear fog light has been given to which is there on both the sides but i love the dynamic swipe indicators look at that now fessel comes fingers of truth always hunting for the exhaust the exhaust is placed right here and you can see the underbody beautifully done now obviously I've put the right hand to the minimum, otherwise you can raise it in four steps. Rear wiper washer is always hidden in a Range Rover, so there it is. Let's open the boot. Obviously this is gesture controlled, powered and it is a decent sized boot. 552 liters, which can be made to around 1358 liters with the second row down. But it's a bit shallow because the car is not that huge. The price is huge though, some storage space here and with this you can recline the seat. 12 volt charging socket, there are multiple hooks, yeah there are multiple hooks, two here, two here as well. Let me put the seat down, I pull this lever and you know what, it's not working. See, it's showing like that, it's moving but it's, no, it's not working. This one works because I tried it before, there, there this thing has gone down and that is the passive shelf of this car. Let me press the button right there. And there it shuts. Obviously, light is on the inside. But the main thing is, if I put my hand, will it stop? Yes, it will. It makes the sound as well. And it, then it goes back up to... Yeah, that's okay. Let's actually see this. Okay, this is kind of stuck. It has to go from there. Yeah, they could have given a better parcel shelf for sure. Now, let me just remove this and throw it away. Because that is the spare wheel of this car. 
full size spare wheel wow with an alloy that's amazing land rover does it for all its cars the range rover specifically but not the sv because there's so many electric motors lying here now for the sv that they have to put a smaller size spare wheel there is jack there is rose there's the toolkit and all that and this is so light now i can actually operate it with one hand as well that's kind of cool let's shut this and there it shuts so yeah let that shut itself let's open the rear door because this seat hit bagwati really badly i was not looking to recline this seat or put this seat down but then that one is not working because you know na certain things work certain things don't work but a car of this price not having rear sun blind is absolutely shocking cost cutting done almost every possible way but i'll tell you what all cost cutting they have done which will shock you now obviously it gets acoustic glass both at the front as well as the rear to cut down on uv rays and all that door pockets are decent size hard plastics are in plenty okay it has got 14 speakers i didn't count it i'm just telling you there's wood treatment here nice treatment nice finishing obviously and this seat also reclines using this button there the recline angle isn't much but yes it does recline there it is going and okay now I have a much better angle isofix child seat mounts here you obviously get a center armrest with two cup holders center passenger gets a head which is quite good and you've got microphones at the rear now once you get inside you realize space is not the usp of this car because legroom and e-room is decent under thigh support is quite poor and headroom It's kind of adequate for someone as tall as me. You obviously get a light here handle hook, but no height adjustable seat belts. Obviously, center passenger is not welcome because of this massive hump right there. Yeah, okay, this is soft magazine holders here, very aircraft style, which I definitely like. And overall quality and all is good enough, but certain things could be a lot better for sure. Yeah, this quarter glass is small. In fact, let me shut this. This window is also small so kind of makes you feel claustrophobic so that could be a lot better and the dashboard is now cleaner lot of things have been removed unfortunately which makes it a pain to use the infotainment system is even at the rear okay it has got four zone climate control air conditioning and there's a 12 volt charging socket right here yes that's it so the thing is that they have put two usb c charging sockets here which is a very inconvenient place according to me let's get out and there's some piano black finishing as well somehow they managed to you know okay no there's no soft close door somehow they managed to do the screens and all fantastically well in the sense that fingerprint magnet it's not it's definitely not now let's get inside okay this mirror is powerful obviously it's heated it's electric and all that let's straight away adjust the seat which is adjustable in 20 ways yeah 20 way adjust for the seat you can see that the steering is moving the seat is moving and then under thigh support is never an issue because this thing is also coming out so yeah the seats are really very nice 20 way adjust seats which is phenomenal says airbag here it's got six airbags says range over here in fact door pockets are decent at the front and here you obviously get the usual controls power windows mirror adjustment memory seat you can say up to three people settings but this button has gone inside so not the best quality the unlock button that is here you get I think this is for the intensity of the light this to open the boot of the vehicle and you get a proper dead pedal as well. Meanwhile, let me show you the key quickly. This is the key of the vehicle which by the way has an unlock lock light and opening the boot and hazard. It's the same key we have seen in so many Land Rover cars and it also has a silhouette of the car right here. Yeah, that's a weird position to have it. I think you can customize and put whatever you feel like. Look at the dashboard. It is nice but too clean for my liking. I'll tell you why. Okay, we have to quickly compare this car with the pre-facelifted model. Okay, it says Meridian right here. 14 speaker system with 400 watt output. Audio quality is obviously phenomenal. Below here you get a USB A and a USB C and this is decent size again it is properly lined which is kind of cool let me shut this this does not slide ahead and behind two cup holders earlier there was a the 12 volt charging socket which has been moved here and there's a wireless charging pad right inside okay now i need to tell you something important before that let me show you the glove box which is obviously lockable which is decent size beautifully lined there's a pen holder here as well but doesn't seem to have the cooling function earlier there were dual screens known as the touch pro duo 10 in screen here 10 in screen here The above screen also used to move. Yes, it was movable with the press of a button. Right, it was having a motor, so it used to move. Now they have removed the bottom screen and given us this cheap storage space here. Now this is extremely cheap, really badly done, and it feels like it will break any moment. Not worthy of a car which cost rupees one crore plus. And the gear lever was here earlier, and there was a cubby hole here along with the Land Rover logo. But they have removed all that. Instead, given us a conventional gear lever. Earlier gear lever was a rotary dial which used to rise up on startup. That drama has gone, which is very unfortunate. 
and all the buttons are gone because the lower screen used to operate a few things like climate and all and it had two rotary dials which is still there in the range rover so you could operate the ventilation heating and the temperature and fan speeds from here now everything is inside the screen there's not a single physical button what is wrong with you land rover it makes it a pain to operate now they say that everything is just two taps away or rather 80 percent of the tasks you want to do are just two taps away even if 100 percent of the tasks are one tap away i just don't feel that i've pressed any button and it's so cumbersome although climate menu is always here shortcut buttons are always there but before that let me open the sun roof actually that does not open the sun blind opens earlier it had a sunroof which used to open now it's just a moon roof so they have removed a proper sunroof for just a glass so what are you doing land rover how can you keep removing features while you increase the price by around rupees four lakhs for this car so that's about it yes this thing has been removed this does not open and fast tag positioning is very weird so lights are touch sensitive you just touch them and you can open it like this and this is for the sos and all okay no clear side camera auto dimming of course here you get a mirror along with a light same is the case here as well and if you notice now there are mics here on the top in fact this is a handle to hold on to for the driver side i think it has got eight airbags okay steering wheel has been changed as well earlier it was a four spoke unit it was a little bigger now it's slimmer and nicer these touch control buttons are not that great to use the horn horn is nice and loud in fact it has got electric adjust so you can adjust it electrically engine start button is there out of your vicinity automatic wipers automatic headlights all that has been given to so this screen is a 12.3 inch screen which by the way is there in a lot of land rover cars and then you can browse to a lot of stuff so that clock is actually new and you can go and change stuff here one dial two dial and whatnot and it's not very intuitive to use okay there you see you get navigation and stuff so you get a lot of information including driver assistance wherein by the way it tells you if you are drowsy so that's about it yes let me get out of this you can make a lot of changes but just not intuitive enough to use now it's in dynamic mode that's why it's a bit red if i get out of dynamic mode now then it will remove that redness yeah that redness is gone now yeah decent cluster but i expected a lot better it tells you exactly which program you have selected on the center of this instrument cluster there is no heads up display here and this screen oh my goodness it's a curved screen it is known as the 11.4 inch pv pro something like that it's very slick to operate in fact it does not get any fingerprints only that's how brilliant it is but it's very cumbersome to use so these are the drive modes and if you want to turn off traction control you have to do it from here these are the ride heights i'm just going to put it to off-road to ride height the car is going to race which i'll show you once we get out so let's get out of here now if i press this button i can get into the air conditioning controls here is for seat ventilation this is for seat heating you can only make one work at one time and this is for the air conditioning so yeah everything is inside the screen let's just turn it off i'm turning it off uh, there it is and then you can sync obviously it's got four zone climate control air conditioning system lot of drive modes here like grass gravel snow mud ruts and all that you can go into the ride height mode you can get into weight sensing because the mirrors have weight sensor so obviously it has uh, i think around 580 mm of uh, water weighting capacity which is decent less than the thar though and then the regular menu wherein you get a lot of stuff like slope assist compass wheel info weight sensor energy impact driving style and all that you get but then honestly you need to come and press this navigation button where you will see that the maps are absolutely phenomenal look at the maps so i'm just going to change the map view yeah 2d view 3d view let's just get back out of it and see that the world is indeed round or is it flat it is round sorry flat earthers and here we will come into this menu again apple car plan android auto connectivity has been added which are both wireless there's a valet mode you can get into the seat function because it has got massage function there i turn on the massage and then it has lesser massages when compared to the real range rovers so five here five intensities as well let me actually get behind and shut this we don't need the massage at the moment and out of here so come back on yeah vehicle dimensions you can see just in case you forget what are the dimensions of the car you are sitting in that also land rover gives you in almost all its cars at least in the range rovers and it has got an air quality monitor and a aqi monitor and obviously an air filter for cleaner air quality which is quite good so you can actually turn it on from there which actually brings me to this particular menu known as cabin lighting because it has got a lot of cabin lighting there you see but you can actually go and change it customize it so it's got a lot of options for cabin lighting although the cabin lighting isn't really what i would call as bright but still it gets the job done so once you get used to this menu it's easy to use but you know we need physical control it's so difficult otherwise it's actually a pain it's a big pain to use this but it's actually very nice in terms of quality and then obviously it's got 3d cameras yeah this works at all speeds so i'm going to use this while driving the car of course when we are doing the driving vlog later on in this video quality of the camera is absolutely phenomenal 
I can just change it from here and then off-road cameras you see there are two cameras on either side center camera there when I turn the steering you can see that as well then downhill assist is there then there's obviously an underbody camera under the front bonnet which is I think uh, stitched on its own so it says now view underneath bonnet is not live that's also the thing let's get into reverse that is the reverse parking camera it obviously has got adaptive guidelines as soon as I got into reverse if you notice that mirror went down now obviously I've got out of reverse so it is going up as well this new clock thing has been added so yes in terms of features some of them are now gone which is very disappointing it's quite sad as well and it's so simple and plain and basic now you miss the drama which was there in the earlier model of course somehow my knee touches here so again very much higher ish right there let me turn off the car and there once i turn it off open the door it does this whole full swipe up thing it will show you the villa right there i think the design is the real highlight of this car but since more or less everything remains the same other than the fact that they ruined this well the engine hopefully should make up for the lack of oomph and drama and you can get the interior in two color options and the exterior in four color options it's got active noise cancellation wherein it cancels low frequency sounds and plays them in reverse to ensure that there is less noise there's a tire pressure monitoring sensor as well tpms but on its maximum ride height now it doesn't look as sleek it looks a bit intimidating yeah i have raised the ride height 50 mm doesn't it look awesome but honestly it's not as capable as regular range rovers because there's no low range transfer case here anyways let's start driving right away look at that sleekness because it's like a coupe -ish. Alright, let's start driving. First thing, air conditioning off, seat ventilation off. We get into the drive modes and I straight away select dynamic mode, turn off traction control as well. Come into drive here, get into this menu, change the info panel because I want to put the map view. By the way, this is a new clock which they have added right here. So here is the full map view, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, come out of this and turn on the camera as well earlier they had this uh, rotary dial just to get into the various drive modes but now they made it a lot more complex we get into sport mode left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor rev still 3000 rpm where is launch control seems to be missing right now okay then it bogs down did not launch only and here one oh god it actually i don't know what is this soft limiter or what but off we go Even with the traction control off, now there is no wheel spin here because obviously it is a four wheel drive system. But in dynamic mode, power goes more to the rear when compared to the front to make it slightly more sporty. But still, this car has quite a lot of understeer. Try to turn it aggressively now, and you can feel that the front wheels are like washing out. Anyways, it's available with two engine options, only one variant, which is the dynamic HSC. HSC stands for high standard equipment. I really don't find the equipment to be high in any regard, but I hope they had offered more variants and more engine options because globally they have so many engine options they have a plug-in hybrid they have six cylinders as well but here we just get four cylinder engines the least powerful engines are offered in India in spite of this being an Indian company obviously it's owned by Tata Motors it is a British brand but come on we need more power so this diesel is known as the D200 and naturally it makes around 200 horsepower 204 PS of power to be precise and the torque output is 430 Newton meters so 204 PS of power comes in at 3750 rpm and stays there till 4000 rpm meanwhile the peak torque which is 430 newton meters comes in at a rather low 1750 rpm and there we have endeavor versus fortuner fortuner one endeavor left so basically this engine has a very nice low end because 1750 to 2500 rpm is where the peak torque lies but slight turbo lag but then pushes really nicely in the mid-range top end is not that great because it becomes very vocal otherwise it's a very smooth and refined engine this diesel goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in in 8.3 seconds meanwhile the top speed is 210 kilometers per hour meanwhile the petrol engine actually is a p250 which produces 250 horsepower and 365 newton meters of torque it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.5 seconds so it's quicker and it's quicker by 7 kilometers per hour in terms of top speed because the top speed is 217 kilometers per hour but the p250 is the only engine without any electric assist because the diesel gets 48 volt mild hybrid system for better efficiency stop start system torque assist regenerative braking and all that 
so obviously this is more efficient the diesel will return somewhere between 8 to 12 kilometers per liter depending on your driving style and where you are driving the petrol is going to guzzle fuel for sure so avoid the petrol at all costs and braking performance is okay it's not that great could be better for sure yeah the brakes fumble a bit left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard light off and come on yeah up shifts at around 4500 rpm but if you manually take control of things now this will go to almost 5000 rpm which is amazing so performance is okay this ingenium engine gets the job done but a six cylinder diesel would be so fantastic but unfortunately that is not the case they just don't give us the good engines here in india do they they just give us the most pared down engine unfortunately and that's very disappointing because this car really begs for a better engine now the dynamics are good but this is no range rover because obviously it does not use the mla platform of the flagship range rovers i'm talking about the range rover proper the big one and the range rover sport instead here it uses the same platform as the xc the xf and the f pace which happens to be the iq d7a platform which is an all aluminum platform it just does not have the conquering feel of the range rover this is the sportiest of all range rovers this is the most road biased range rover and that's the reason the seating is the lowest of any range rover and that's the reason it doesn't give you that much suv feel it does have feel around the corners it's good it's not great because there is body roll and the suspension just isn't that good enough because it cracks crashes through the worst of roads so there are bad roads coming ahead and you can listen to this yeah it crashes through there low profile tires are not there on this car as such so you can't really blame that the issue specifically lies with the fact that this is just not a range rover it is called the velar because the earlier generation the first generation that is of the range rovers prototype model was known as velar because obviously land rover wanted to hide it from journalists who were like peeking into seeing what land rover is launching that time so that's why they actually called it the velar the pre production model now over speed brakes and all no problem at all this has electronic air suspension you can raise the ride height by around 50 mm and because it's a range rover taking a u turn um, very comfortably while everyone stops is not a difficulty at all now this is an 8 speed zf sourced automatic gearbox which fumbles at low speeds but is decently quick as you speed up the horn is nice but the thing is you have got paddle shifter so i'm going to use them right now here it <laughs> mostly it won't give me a gear shift but it becomes very noisy high end of the rev range and there it glows red these bumps really unsettle the car so yeah it is on the stiffer side a typical european type of tuning of the suspension wherein low speed ride is stiff high speed ride is good high speed handling is actually quite good there it holds on to a gear it will not upshift unless and until i decide to do so and it was already in third gear still it was it's still showing third right now and it does 102 in third gear so gearing isn't very tall that's expected steering is actually a delight yeah it has so much feel and feedback but there's quite a lot of body roll in this car that's the only concern i have right now and i love the camera system yeah this is so freaking beautiful no denying that fact so there are four ride height modes access height is the lowest and then there is the normal ride height on which it will be driven there's off road one and off road two so you can increase the ride height it's got something known as adaptive dynamics which basically monitors the body movements 500 times a second to make changes to the air suspension to ensure that you have a very smooth and comfortable ride but adas function are not there in this car other than lane keep assist and lane departure warning so they can offer that as well but i think brands like land rover and few other brands are doing cutting like audi also audi doesn't really offer adas functions in india so they cut corners there i think adas is not really suited for india so that is fine for sure making a quick lane change and all is not difficult at all which actually brings me to the wiper test which i'm not done yet and the wipers work really well there's so much spray on offer na absolutely phenomenal like the quality of most of the things is amazing it's just not a range rover it just doesn't feel like one it just doesn't drive like one and it still has that feel no denying that fact it still has that suv feel because obviously you're sitting in a cabin which very much looks like a range rover and what is that bike which is flying right there so let me just up shift in terms of pricing they've increased the price by rupees 4 lakhs which is quite a lot of increase in pricing to be honest considering the amount of features which have gone out of this car so the price of this car is rupees 1.14 crores ex showroom price of both the petrol and diesel is exactly the same however with the diesel the registration cost is higher by around rupees 2 lakh that's the reason this one cost rupees 1.14 crores and the petrol cost around rupees 1.12 crores slightly more than that 20000 more or something but the point here is that registration charge is rupees 15 lakhs and for the very first year the insurance cost is rupees 4 lakhs so everything is quite expensive here then obviously you are getting a range rover 
it's better to pay a little bit more money or rather quite a lot of more money to get the Range Rover Sport. The Sport is obviously much, much, much better in the way it handles and all, even though it's heavier. This is also heavier, 2000 kgs, but the Sport actually has a 48 volt anti roll bar at the rear. So that also works fantastically well. Oh my God, I see that it's going to be impossible to cross that road right ahead of me. So you're going to speed up a bit, but I don't think I'm going to make it because you can see right now who is crossing ahead. So we're going to come to a halt for sure. Low speed performance is smooth and doesn't get that vocal, but at high speed, it does get a, a lot vocal and then let's do the moose test <laughs> traction control kicking in, ESP kicking in in spite of the fact that I've turned off traction control that is one thing but you know what it has brilliant insulation only bit of the road noise is little vocal other than that you can't hear much now if you have a cng car cooling is extremely important and that's the reason this guy has opened his tailgate and his driving because he wants to cool the cng tank i'm kidding he's carrying something that's the reason he's doing it a diesel is a diesel is a diesel a diesel is just unparalleled the sound even at higher end of the rev range is so music to my ears but then now it's time for the brake test which means that should we apply should we not we should your hazard lights on Okay, let's actually change the cluster because obviously there are multiple options. Only thing is so fidgety to use. I don't like these touch controls at all. They could be a lot better. So here we get into one dial mode. I'm going to change the camera view as well. So we're going to put the off-road camera with the side views first and left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hazard lights off and off we go. It's manual mode, first gear 44 kilometers per hour. Second gear 68, yeah, one more hoja to kya jata. And third gear, it will cross 100 km per hour, around 102 km per hour is where it will reach. There, 102. Into fourth gear. So, this is an 8 speed gearbox, obviously not the fastest in terms of shifts. Now, it has something known as an elegant arrival mode, which actually lowers the car by 40 mm every time you get in or out, something of that sort. Now, water weighting capacity isn't that great, just 580 mm of water weighting capacity, which I find is a bit less, but then obviously it is the lowest of all Land Rover models because it's more road biased and I don't know which road they are benchmarking, but definitely not Mumbai because water weighting is definitely needed here. Now, it has got uh, all surface progress control, which is obviously the cruise control for lower speeds, which is helpful when you go off-road but then this is not very off-road centric because it does not get a low range transfer case no low ratio in this car so yeah that's a big bummer but then again i was telling you this is very road biased a car globally unveiled in the first half of 2017 and it went on sale globally in latter half of 2017 then in india it was launched in 2018 in 25 variants because it came via the cbu route then in 2019 they realized the pricing is too high so they decided to locally assemble this car in india via the ckd route because of which prices actually dropped by rupees 15 lakhs but only one variant was offered like one trim two engines same is the case right now as well and this particular variant which is the dynamic hsc high standard equipment really needs a lot more features yeah because i'm quite disappointed here i'm changing the camera view camera view is absolutely phenomenal then in 2021 they gave it a sort of an update which is sort of the first facelift 2023 they gave it the second update the second facelift they call it the my 2024 model year 2024 model which actually brings me to the rivals of this car one is the porsche macan and the other is its own stable mate the jaguar f pace both of which are much more attractively priced but forget both these cars let's talk about the bmw x5 which is the true rival to this car because the x5 is such a better car in almost every regard more reliable too and cost almost similar to this car now i'm obviously talking about the x line because if we talk about the m sport the top end x drive 30d m sport is almost rupees 18 lakhs more expensive than this car but then obviously a bmw is a bmw is a bmw and then you also get reliability which makes me believe that if you want to spend around 1.14 crores on a car just get the land rover defender a lot better a car because that car has a personality it has amazing driving feel and obviously it feels like a land rover this one does not feel like a range rover it can feel like a land rover but definitely does not feel like a range rover which is kind of unfortunate and talking about the defender you can get two variants of the defender for lesser money than this car one two lakhs lesser but then there are 30 variants of the defender on offer and the top variant which has the five liter supercharged v8 engine costs 2.72 crore somewhere around that that is so much money that you can get two velas and you can get the best suv the super duper suv in each and every one of its seven colors as well along with that so you can get nine cars and can you guess which car i'm talking about which is available in seven colors which is super duper suv i'm talking about the espresso yeah the espressos all colors can be got along with two velas for the price of the top end defender but the defender is so popular it accounts for almost half of land rover sales in india in fact 
around 45 percent sales come from the defender alone and 78 percent sales come from the defender the range rover sport and the range rover that is the popularity of these three models and the vela in spite of looking super sexy does not contribute as much to the sales figures of land rover so land rover has sold 1000 units of the defender in india which is a lot which is absolutely crazy and this car obviously is five star in terms of euro and cab rating obviously it's a safe car it's a global car it's a fantastic car only thing is overpriced and under equipped and that's the reason why i would not buy one and i would honestly urge all of you to want more ye dil mange more we want more features we need better engines we need more cylinders and that's the only way we are going to get better cars in india dikhaave mat jao apni akal lagao the looks are sexy but other than that this car just fails to impress if you like this vlog make sure to give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye